We would like to welcome Mick to the Our Stories project. Can you please tell us who you are and who your mob is? I was born at West Kempsey Hospital, mid North Coast, in the Kempsey region. By the time I was five years of age, my mother and father used to go to the butchers. They found out the, the butcher was called Mick. And my mother and father looked at me and looked at the butcher and says, Mick, Mick, ball the edit, ball the edit. So that name stuck to me from then on. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your family story and where you grew up? My mum used to work in a in the manager's house, cleaning up, washing up, wiping up. My dad used to work on a, a farm. He was a very fast winger, one of the best wingers that ever played for played rugby league in the Kempsey region. I, I absolutely love my family and today I'm the last of my family. All my brothers and sisters all passed away, mum and dad's passed away, and I'm the last. And I'm, I'm now 70, 72 in July. Jeez, I'm good looking, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you have had lots of time for the students at Bonnie High School. Could you tell us about your involvement in our school community? I get involved and get them involved also in what I, ever, what, I, what, I, what I do. And that's the good part about it. Getting them involved. No use just talking to a person and showing them, ah, oh, this is a boomerang, this is a spear, this is a sucker. It doesn't work for you. You've got to explain things. So that's one of the reasons why I do things properly so they can understand where I'm coming from and they appreciate that way. How does your culture influence you as an individual and place in society? The kids that I had at Plumpton High School didn't know anything about culture, Aboriginal culture, simply because their parents didn't talk to them. And I found that very hard to swallow because my mother and father used to talk to me about my culture and why it stopped, I don't know. But I, I, I said to a young bloke one day, I said, go and find out off your father. You need to learn your culture. I said, what about when, you, when your kids are growing up? I said, what are you going to tell them if they ask you a question about your culture? I said, you don't wait to be taught, you ask. If you don't ask, you'll never get an answer. Okay? That's the way I get my community to accept me because I make them make my kids go out and find out about their culture so their parents can understand where I'm coming from. I want to be part of them. What experiences or lessons have you been able to pass on to the younger generation? The young boy that I spoke to, his name was Harley. He was not an Aboriginal person, just an um, ordinary young kid that didn't want to be at school. The last year I was at the school and he walked past me and went, Harley! How are you, mate? He said, good Uncle Mick. I said, you're year 12, aren't you? He said, yes. I said, you just did your HSC. He said, yes, Uncle Mick. Shake your ear, mate. And I shook his hand. I said, you made me very proud of you, mate. You stayed back and you did the work. A couple of weeks later, I was, went over to the shopping centre and here he is, stacking the, stacking the shelves up. I said, Harley, is it working here, mate? He said, yes, Uncle Mick. He said, but I'm only working till Christmas time. I said, why? He said, because I'll go to uni next year. I said, mate, you must have listened because I'm so proud of you now. You know, young kid that you would, what you were like and now you go to uni. I said, that really puts a feather in your cap. I said, there's a big feather in my cap at the moment, but yours is gonna be bigger because you did something that I never thought you'd do. You listened to me. And he said, oh no, I got it. He said, I went back in, I did my work, did everything right, so I can go to the uni. And hopefully I'll get a really good job after this, what I, what I, that I want to do. I said, good mate. You made me so proud of you today when you said that. And that was, that was my greatest, greatest moment in, in the whole time to get a young boy like that listen to me in year 8 and doing year 12 and go to uni. How do you feel about the representation of Aboriginal culture in Australia today? Oh, well, the representation, I think it's great. It, look, we've got NITV on TV. That is 
It's good for the Aboriginal people to see their countrymen getting up, singing, dancing, doing all the things that they should be doing and letting not just the Aboriginal people see it, but the whole world see it. How, how they're getting on in this society. The society is pretty, pretty bad when, you know, I'll be honest, when we weren't accepted as people. Then we got the referendum, we've got who we are, we're people, we can vote now. That to me was great. Reconciliation was good. Acceptance was absolutely fantastic. Being an Aboriginal person. Sorry Day was a great one. I, I marched across Sydney Arbor Bridge, Sorry Day. When I go to any, go anywhere, I'm accepted at most places. I, I don't think I've, the only time I wasn't accepted was at Canberra. I walked into a pub with all my football mates and they, the blokes, at the, the bouncers at the front door went, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. Sorry, you can't come in. <laughs> the night ended up all right. I enjoyed myself there. And it was just because I was an average person, I wasn't allowed in. On the football field, you get it all the time. When they get real smart, they go, listen, mate, you talk about coloured people. I said, you, I'm born black. You grow up, you're white. You go out in the sun, you go red. You get sick, you're green. When you, when you die, you're blue or grey. We're black when we're born. We're black when we go out in the sun. We're black when we grow up. And we're black when we get sick. When we die, we're black. Who's the coloured person? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would like to thank you for coming in today. And it was lovely to meet you. Look, it was very, very lovely to meet you. <laughs>